Hello, my name is Niels Hansen. I'm the project manager of the new uh, software Zikat function. And now I will show you how we bring together the different data within the software to show full patient-specific animations and chewing motions in 3D together with Galileos and CEREC data. So first of all, I select the data set, which is uh, integrated into the Zikat suite. We prepared here a data set for the demonstration. I open it up, it loads very quickly into the 3D software. And you see, first of all, the typical views within the software, the panoramic view on the left, the 3D view of the Galileo's data on the right, and some slice views at the bottom of the software. What I do now is to import space patient-specific jaw motion data we acquired with the ZCut function JMT device. For that, I will click this button here above in the toolbar. I quickly select the motion data, and here you see the reference spoon we use for bringing the data together, the uh, patient-specific uh, movement data and the DBT data, or CBCT data. Here are some information about the patient, uh, when the data has been acquired, and I quickly go to the wizard to show you how we register the motion data and the CBCT data together. So basically, what you do is you go through the slices here on the right, through the Excel slices, until you see the bright spots, which are actually radio park markers, which are visible in the CBCT data set. What you do is you roughly mark these bright spots, three of them in this slice view, by double clicking the left mouse button. You hit next, and after a second, you see that the um, registration spoon has been matched to the volume data. Green circles indicate that the matching has been successful. It's a very high precision registration of the motion data to the CBCT data. So what we can do now is to show anatomical traces of the patient chewing data within the CBCT data. You see it here by um, these red lines, which are superimposed on the CBCT data. What I do next is to activate the segmentation of the patient's jaw in order to show the real movements of the jaw of the patient within the CBCT data. And I select a motion that has been imported from the ZCAD function jaw motion tracker, and I will start the animation now. So now you see for the first time real patient acquired chewing data within CBCT data and this movement data is cascaded to all the anatomy of the, of the lower jaw. Now I'm going to integrate the CEREC surface data which has been acquired from the upper and lower jaw of the patient to provide high precision um, surface data of the occlusion. This is done also by a, a software wizard which I will demonstrate now. I click this icon here on the toolbar I select the CEREC dataset that has been acquired before. Basically, that is our well-known CEREC registration wizard where the CEREC data and the CBCT data come together. You quickly check the quality of the data. You go to the next step. Now you denote some rough reference points of the lower jaw and the CEREC lower jaw model. This is done in the panoramic view of the CBCT data. Just three markers. You hit next and the automatic registration procedure starts. After a few, few seconds you see that the CEREC data has been registered to the CBCT data quite well. We have a quality inspection step here and you see by this contour line that the contour of the CEREC data and the CBCT data matches very, very good. So I go to the next step in the software wizard. Now we go for the, for the upper jaw of the CEREC data. Again, I select three rough landmarks that the algorithm is able to detect the correlation. One, two, three. Again, I hit the next button for matching the upper jaw to the CBCT data as well. 
So we see everything went fine. Again, in the quality inspection step, we see the contour of the CEREC data matches very good to the CBCT data. I hit finish and directly go to the animation and now we have really the patient data not only in the CBCT data but also on the CEREC data that has been registered with the CBCT data. So what we can do now for the first time is really to show the correlation or the spatial relation of the condyle and the fossa within the actual patient anatomy. I will show you now in the software how this is done. So here we have the patient actually performing and chewing an apple, a piece of an apple with, that has been acquired with the Z-Cut function JMT, jaw motion tracker. When I rotate this view, I'm now able to place arbitrary reference points on the patient's anatomy to show how these reference points uh, move in space and how the, the chewing patterns of the patient correlate with the actual patient anatomy. Now I go further up, up to the condyle of the patient, I make a click and I select the opening motion of the patient, which I will start right now. You see the patient is opening his mouth. You see a blue reference line here, again with the anatomical reference spot, the yellow anatomical reference spot. And what we can do now, and I will activate the condyle view, is that we are now able to show both the dynamic occlusion on the right, so you see how the teeth and the occlusion come together, and at the same time we are able to show the actual movement of the condyle with respect to the fossa within the patient's anatomy. So now you clearly see in 3D freely how the condyle of the patient, the right condyle of the patient, moves out of the fossa while the patient opens his mouth. You can freely rotate around and also look from the inside of the jaw into the patient's condyle anatomy. Of course, since it is a CBCT imaging technique, we are not able to see the disc right away, the disc that is between the condyle and the fossa. However, because we see the, the gap between the condyle and the fossa, we are able to yeah, somehow implicitly make assumptions on how the disc within uh, the, the condyle resides. For example, if the gap between the condyle and the fossa is very narrow, you can be sure that the disc is somehow dislocated from the condyle by moving uh, to the front or to the back, or the disc is compressed within the, within the jaw. On the right side we have uh, different chewing motions acquired by a prescribed chewing protocol. Um, these data, these true digital data are used for um, producing TMJ splints. So we have the first TMJ therapy which bases on dynamic patient data that is um, yeah, actually real patient data that's not a simulation you see here. So in this way we are really able to produce true dynamic TMJ treatment splints in our lab at Bonn, Germany from ZCAT. The process is as follows. You transfer all the acquired digital data just by the internet to ZCAT in Bonn, Germany. And with our milling machines, like for the classic and OptiGuide, you know from the ZCAT implant software, we are able to produce this treatment splint uh, within a couple of days. And you can be sure, since we have real patient-specific data here, that um, the splint fits very well into the patient's mouth. You don't have to do much drilling within the chair. And since the data is really patient-specific, we can offer a very, very accurate and very effective splint therapy with this TMJ splint. So thank you for your attention and bye-bye.